In this video, we're going to write code in Excel VBA that allows us to remove duplicate values from multiple columns all at once. So you can see here I have a data set of loan records. In column B, we have a field called location, and we have multiple duplicates in that column. Column C, we have the loan type, which also has duplicates. And ultimately, what we want to do is copy these two columns, paste them beginning in column F, remove all of the duplicate values so that we have only unique records for these two columns, and then perform a sum ifs formula in column H so that we can total the loan amounts by those two unique values. So I'll go ahead and show you a preview of what we're going to build today. So if I go to macros, I have already created code called remove duplicates. And if I run it, it removes all the duplicate values. It also sorts them by location and loan type and then performs a sum ifs function to get the totals by these unique values. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11 or going to the developer ribbon and clicking on the visual basic button. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert, and then module. We'll call this subroutine remove duplicates and begin by declaring some variables. We're going to have a variable called WB. It's going to be as the data type workbook. We're going to have a variable called WS. It's going to be as the data type worksheet. We're going to have a variable called range, RNG. It's going to be as the data type range. We're going to have another range variable called destination range. We're going to have a variable called last row. It's going to be as the data type long. So these first four variables are object variables. They need to begin with the keyword set. So I'm going to set our workbook equal to this workbook, the one we're in now. We're going to set our worksheet variable equal to our workbook variable, and then worksheets and the sheet we're on now, which is sheet 1. I'm going to set our range variable equal to columns B and C. That's the range we want to copy. So that's going to be equal to our worksheet variable and then range B through C. We're going to set our destination range variable to the range we want to copy our range variable to, which that's just going to be columns F and G. So we're going to reference our range variable. We're going to use the copy method. Our destination is going to be equal to our destination range variable. So after that, we're going to reference our destination range variable and remove duplicates. And that has two inputs. The first one is how many columns we have. So the syntax for that is keyword columns equal to and then array. And we just list the number of columns we have, each one individually separated by a comma. We have two columns, so we'll list them like that. The second input is whether or not we have headers for those columns. And we do, so that's going to be Excel yes. So I'll go ahead and run this so you can kind of get a visual of what this looks like. So you can see we get our unique values. At this point, what we want to do is sort by the location and then by loan type. So we're going to reference our destination range variable again, use the sort method. The first input for that is key one, which represents the first column we want to sort. So that is going to be equal to any cell in that column. You don't have to use an entire column reference. You can just refer to a single cell. So we'll reference our worksheet variable, and then I'm just going to use a shorthand method for the first cell, which is F1. 
in brackets. That's just shorthand range reference there. Then we have the order one for how we want that sorted. We want ascending. So I'm running out of space here. I'm going to copy this because we're going to use this same syntax for our next column. And I need to go to a new line. I need to hit space and underscore. So I'm going to paste that in there, change key one to key two, change our cell reference to G1 because we want to sort column G and order one to order two. The last thing we need to define is whether or not we have headers again, and we do. So again, that's going to be Excel, yes. So go ahead and run this. And we have sorted first by location, then by loan type. So at this point, we want to get our last row variable defined because we might add new data new branches or new loan types, this could change. So we need something dynamic here to get the last row. And then once we have the last row, what we want to do is add the sum ifs formula in H2 to our last row. So our last row is going to be equal to the last row, wherever that may be in column F that has data in it. So we're going to reference worksheet. And then for a range reference, we're going to use cells. That allows you to input numbers for row and column inputs. So our row input is going to be equal to rows and then count. We want this in column F. That's column 6. So we want to end XL up and then return that row number. So this range reference here is like the, it counts all of the rows on our spreadsheet all the way down to the very bottom. So that's like the last row in column F. From there, we're doing the equivalent end Excel up is like hitting control up arrow. So that takes us to this whatever last row in column F has, that has data in it and we return that row number so that will always get the last row with data so now what we want to do is loop from row 2 to our last row add a sum if formula here in h2 to our last row in column age so we want to repeat a step so to do that we're going to use a for loop where it repeats a step based on a beginning and ending point you specify. So our beginning point is going to be a variable called i. It's just a counter variable. It starts at 2 because we want to start at row 2 and go to the last row variable. So we want to reference our worksheet and then cells. We want to put this in column h. But first, our row input is our counter variable, so that's row 2, begins on row 2, and then column 8. We want to set that equal to the sum ifs function, so we need to reference application, and then worksheet function, and then sum ifs. Now I'm running out of space again, so I'm going to hit space and underscore. To continue this on a new line. So the first input of sum ifs is our sum range, which is column D. So we have worksheet range D. We have our first criteria range, which is going to be the location column, column B. So I'm just going to copy this. Put column B. Our first criteria cell on row 2 is going to be cell F2, so that's the location for that row. So we're going to reference cells again, and then our counter variable, and that's column 6 because that's column F. I am going to copy this code here because we're going to come down on a new line again, so space and underscore. 
going to change our range reference to our second criteria column, column C, the loan type. And our criteria for that column is going to be column 7, which is column G. And that is everything we need for our sum ifs function. So now in our loop, we just need to use the keyword next and our counter because this will take us back up to the top, increment this from a two to a three and repeat these steps until we go all the way through our last row. So the only other thing I wanna do is once we have this data in column H, we need to format it in an accounting style. So I'm gonna reference our worksheet variable again, range H2 through H and then an and symbol to concatenate this to our last row variable. We wanna set the number format to an accounting style format. So that's just gonna be equal to something like that. I want to add a header in cell H1 and add a border to that header. So we're gonna reference range H1. Copy this. We're gonna set that equal to the word totals for our header. And then we're gonna add borders set the line style equal to XL continuous. So this should be everything we need. So I'll F8 through this to execute this one line of code at a time. I'm going to delete this out just so we'll start from the very beginning here. So I'm gonna copy B through C, paste it in columns F through G. We're gonna remove the duplicates. We're gonna sort column F and then column G. Define our last row variable. We're gonna start populating beginning in cell H2, the sum ifs output. This is just gonna repeat as we go through our loop, row by row. We're gonna format that, add a header, and add borders. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.